the main usage or main reason for blocks realistically is to buy yourself time so you can power up your character right as far as for yourself yeah. if you're very uh, if you've optimized the speed of placing blocks and you know where you can put them and which side of them you stand on because um, when you place blocks they're on a grid right and you know that so depending on where you're standing on the stage it'll show you or when you stand up onto the block you'll be like in the middle of the block left side of the block or the right side of the block right so if you know where you are there's some spots where you can like put out blocks and then uh it's usually take like a single step forward you're immediately off the block as well so you can like put down a block and if you're landing right on the edge of it you can put one down and jump off of it and get like uh, extensions that would be true just because of where you place the block right yeah the nil stuff i've been practicing that actually quite a bit uh I can't, I, I pulled it off on a Kirby once in quick play. And, you know, I was pretty happy about it. Stone tools on a Kirby, zero mm percent. -hmm. <laughs> but uh, outside of that, I've, I've landed it a million times in training mode, once in quick play. And I realized that this is not going to make my neutral any better. Me practicing this over and over is not going to really improve how I actually play mm -hmm. in a normal match. So, because of course, it's yes actually, and so no. Uh, uh, yeah, you have to set up the situation itself. But let's say, for example, um, Let's say you have this much space in front of you right here. If you have a very optimized combo game, if I go like this and I miss, you could turn that into me dying, right? Or taking 60. It could either be a ladder combo that goes up here, right? Or it could be uh, a grab into like a down throw, into like an IDJ fair, into like a pickaxe, into something like a down tilt at the ledge, into like a ledge trap. Uh, it could be Dude, a lot of different uh, things, right? How do you I, know? I've never really found the use for IDJs, actually. I've been, I've been wondering about that. Because... So... I, I've seen a lot of videos about that, but like, is there like a specific reason to use it? For Steve, that, the only real reason I know for Steve is that if you do an IDJ on the majority of the cast, it gets you that slight bit higher so that your fair actually spikes off the ground. Because if you do a fair, or sorry, a full hop uh, fair, more often than not, it doesn't spike. Right? And it's not because of the, the, the hitbox or you, it's because of where I am in, in relationship to the hitbox. I'm not quite underneath the, the, the tip of the fair enough, so I get hit away from you. Right? So if you've ever done like down throw fair and you're trying to get like down throw fair to spike, you have to do down throw IDJ fair. And then that's how you can do like pick loops, for example. Um, I can also say, like, I guess going back to the idea of the, uh, the combo game, if your combo game is very lackluster, you can see me, let's say, go for a dash or dash grab and miss, and your your punish is just jab or like a forward tilt or a dash attack, and that's it, right? So, uh, what it boils down to is there's there's um, I guess a fork in the road to say if I go like this, if you know what to do, it can be devastating. If you don't know what to do, then you're gonna do something like dash attack me, right? Or you're gonna do like a forward throw, and that's it. What you need to do as far as um, after you've got your combo game optimized, which if you feel like quite comfortable with it. You now have to recognize the situation where a combo will actually be put into place. Right? This would be I, this yeah. is improvisation, right? Or this is improvising. I'm able to I'm able to execute a lot of these combos, but whenever I'm put under immense pressure, especially with like guys who just jump around like all crazy, just preventing my options, doing all this, backing me in a corner, and I'm like, okay, place blocks. Mm -hmm. They immediately just jump over, and I get I get two fixed fast reaction. I know you can easily just do up tilt or up smash for more middle option, or mm -hmm. you can just back air them by doing this, but most of the time, it's just I'm not able to, I'm either not able to recognize situations or punish, or I'm able to recognize or not punish. Of course, whenever someone comes up to me, it just does the very obvious grab and just misses. Mm -hmm. I'm able to just go, okay. Here's what I would say, too. This is where you'd want to start using your um, mining as bait. So, for example, if you put out a block in front of me, you can mine one or two uh, blocks out of the ground, maybe even just one. And as soon as I start to make my move, instead of saying you have to cancel or get out of blocks to then defend yourself, you're putting out or you're mining just really quickly to try and get me to believe that you're going to have lag. But instead of doing like three or four or five blocks or five, I guess, digs into the ground, you do one. And as soon as I jump, you're not jumping with me and you're catching me with like a back air. This would be setting up a read or setting up a situation. So put out, put out three blocks or two blocks in front of me, just like a straight up. Yeah, like that. So if you were to do one, two, and I jump over like this because I want to try and come down, I probably wouldn't do fair. I'd probably come down like this, right? Uh, you can catch, meet me in the middle, basically, right? So now what I'm going to do is, let's, let's say, put out the blocks again. So instead of me coming down like this and trying to hit you, because if I do that and you catch me, let's say, uh, if you do an up smash and I come down on your up smash, then I'm obviously going to be in a terrible spot, right? It's not what I want to have happen. I'd much rather, obviously, get a punish. But if you do that, 
and the three blocks are in front of me next time if I go like this it's very obvious that something bad is probably going to happen you don't even have to go for an up smash you could be dashing back and going for an F smash you could be jumping and going for the back air like I said before uh, dashing out of the way and going for a grab when I land um, what I'm going to start doing instead is now hitting the blocks to try and get through right if you know how much health a block has or you know when a block is going to break if i'm in the middle of hitting the block and i actually do the finishing hit on the block you can still punish me afterwards as well if you know a block is just about to break then that's where you make your read and you throw out a mine card underneath the blocks and it catches me and i get stuck in it if i'm mashing a high enough percent you can now jump over your blocks and come down with a fair as i pop out right and you're setting up situations off of your uh block placement and block play right these are reads that are going to be developed over time for yourself to say, when I do this, the average person tries to do this, tries to jump over top, tries to break the blocks, just sits back and shoots the blocks and does nothing. If they sit back and shoot and they want to try and like uh, be safe away from the blocks while you're digging, then continue to continue to mine, right? If I really want to interact and be aggressive, take that into account and say, how how is he being aggressive? If I go in on the ground, you should have punishes ready to go. As soon as I break the block, I should be getting F smashed in the face or grabbed or instant dash attacked or mine cart. If I jump over the top, I'm being met in the air. So I think the biggest thing for that too is to not be caught by surprise when someone tries to get past your blocks. You shouldn't be like, oh shit, they're actually coming in here. It's like, of course I am. I want to try and fight you. You should be that one or two steps ahead. So a majority of your advice is basically just you have blocks, use them. There is no reason for you to keep yourself unprotected. There's no reason for you to go in when you don't have better tools that you can easily access more. Of course, there I've, I've had a couple of situations where I prefer to go in with wood tools because I find that wood to sometimes wood tools just have less knockbacks and tumble mm -hmm. less like they can be set up for way better ladder combos yep but majority of the time i shouldn't be going for stuff like that unless i make a read of my opponent whenever mm -hmm. i'm coming down for so there's one thing okay. that maybe i might say this in a different way but it's not so much that you're mining and setting up the blocks to get a particular tool in the situation i just talked about you're setting up a situation so that i am acting and you are putting me into basically a storyline to say uh, put out blocks right in front of me, right? Put out like two or three, like straight up how you did before, right? If you make something like this, right? What happens right here when you're mining? Do I run in or do I jump over? This is where you're making a read, right? You can mine until the end of time, <clears throat> until the end of time, and not actually go and grab your diamond if you don't want to in that particular moment. Because if I'm rushing you down, you don't have to, you don't have time to stop mining, bring up your crafting table, actually make diamond, and then fight. But what you do have time to do is set up a situation where it's creating pressure for me to try and stop you from getting your tools. So if I'm going to jump over the top to try and stop you, this is where you're uh, basically debating me or baiting me to say, if I jump over like this, I should be getting met by something, right? Something like that, right? So now the next time I now have to, uh, or I should be hesitating to say, if I jump over, probably something bad is going to happen. I have to like jump like this and like double jump away and try and bait you. Right, try and make you jump That's, at me and come down. That is actually another thing. What I, I, I always get into situations because commonly when I'm just trying to do that, I'll just be like, okay, he's coming really fast. I'll just go for the match this time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the next time they're just going like, oh, I, I have really yeah, poor jump. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do like a double jump do or something like, like this, right? They'll do a double jump like that, I think. Should I be expecting that or should I be like running back or should I be shielding because they can't grab me when they're jumping over it? So, also, a lot of people love to go for the uh, tilts. I can just go for the F smash over mm -hmm. here. So I would say this is where pattern recognition comes into play. And this is conditioning 101, right? I can never say, I promise you or guarantee 100% that the first time someone jumps over and gets hit, the next time they're going to go like this. I can't, I can't say that yeah. for sure. But what I can so say be is you, you should try and be prepared for both. But before you even are prepared for both, so let's say if he jumps over the top and you know he's going to land on you, you can up smash. If you know he's going to double jump, you can dash out of the way and now catch his landing because he can't jump again. What I would be saying here, this is where the layering of conditioning comes into play. If someone does not adjust to what you've done, keep doing what you're doing. That's as simply put as possible. If I jump over every single time and I don't start double jumping, just keep up smashing me. If I don't learn, I'm going to lose. That's, it's that simple. If I do start going like this and you go for an, uh, an up smash and you miss, you have to take note of that, right? Because I'm trying to condition you back, right? The game is not a one player game, of course. So if you are going for an up smash and I double jump away and I don't get hit and then I come down and I get like a down air or you panic and shield and I get a grab, you have to take, a, take note of that to say, okay, when he jumps over and this is where you might have a third different punish. Instead of trying to jump up and catch my double jump, you can just uh, dash out of the way so you cancel your... your um, 
cancel your mining, dash out of the way, and if I still come down in front of you, let's say I come down like this, or I do come down like this, if I land on your shield, you can try, try and, I guess, fair or narrow the shield to hit me because your grab's kind of slow, or you can dash out of the way and just catch my landing with your grab, right? Or you can go for a minecart and try and hit me. Or you can try and meet me in the air once my double jump is spent. Because let's say if I was to double jump down like this, right? I, I kind of have to land, not on top of you, but I'd have to go like this to get away from you. Or go like this to get away from you, right? If I'm scared of actually getting hit. In which case, if I do this, what was the point of jumping in on you, right? If I do that, that is pointless, right? And all I'm doing now is giving you more time and creating more space. And I'm basically playing your game at this point because I'm scared of getting up smashed. At this point, we've basically transcended past the point of talking about Steve and his tools, and we're talking more so about bait and punish, conditioning, and layering of conditioning. I try to I try to watch those things back and see whenever like an opponent is conditioning. I always see like I always I fought like a Jigglypuff the other day, and he just kept on using the side B. It's like, well, why does he keep using it? And I was just like, well, he's using it because it keeps working. Yep. And stuff like that. Yeah, this is positive reinforcement. Always, That's what it is. But go ahead. I gotta figure out how to stop stop an opponent, or like at least figure out how to counter that move in some capacity. Like, when are they using these in these scenarios? Or like, what is it like? Because I'm using minecart, and they're like, okay, well, my thing I'll prioritize is minecart, which is a thing that happens with Jigglypuff. Mm -hmm. Jigglypuff, like, he'll just break my mind, or they'll break my minecart, and they'll also hit me in the face. So are they doing? Is it like a shore hop side B, or are they doing it on the ground? So most of the time, I'll I'll go back to do like stuff like this, or like I'll just it just depends. Sometimes I go for a mix up, and if they're going for like so like I'll go for like sometimes they, if they love to jump out, just like they'll they'll go for that. Yeah. Of course, my jump is really slow compared to Falco yeah. Falcos, but like yeah. whenever like shorter jumps, when they get like to go for like the uh, the huge jump in the air, mm -hmm. I know there's a way to no impact land out of minecarts, but I can't mm -hmm. do it very well. You can try to go for the up smash to catch them. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of options that I've got to train. A lot of options that I could be easily more using, definitely in different scenarios. So I can say this about, let's say, Falco specifically. If you throw out the minecart and you see that I jump and you know you can't catch me, what you can do is try and set up a juggle situation. And a juggle situation means that you're not going to to chase your, you're not going to chase me with your double jump. Instead, you're going to try and let me land somewhere in an unfavorable way. So if I go like this, try and jump to get past you or try and like catch you in the air and I miss either I put myself in lag or if I have to like waste my double jump because you're right underneath me and you could up smash me or up tilt me uh, I might side B which is going to give me landing lag which I can get caught by another side B here from you or you can go for a dash attack or try and grab me because I'm probably going to shield or if I happen to air dodge now you can run up to me and go for an F smash uh, with juggling yeah. you want to try and stay close to me uh, I guess you could say uh, how would this be horizontally close to me? Because if I'm way up here, you don't have to be up here with me. You just have to be uh, approximately quite close underneath, right? You don't want to be way I over here if I'm like uh, this, right? You think it's a good idea? Because uh, commonly, I love to uh, go for these call outs. Like if they're trying to land, I'll just go like, okay, I'll just do diamond, diamond mm -hmm. forward air, back air, try to spike them down. Maybe I can get that, uh, that fair uh, up smash. Up fair up smash. That's yep. a pretty good one that I can pull off sometimes. So whenever I catch someone jumping, I can try to spike them down. I'm like, okay, spike them. I'll try to go for the up smash. Just stuff like that. Just to, do you think those callouts are just like, should I do them like as like a mix up or should I try to like callouts are reads? Like, my options around. No, I, I think you 100 percent should be going for that. That's what we've been talking about this whole time, right? If you have callouts, um, and if we're talking by about a different uh, terminology as far as saying callouts or reads, um, if you have pre-scripted or pre-planned callouts or combos or kill confirms uh and you've already practiced them very well if it's like a two hit combo or it's like you're gonna dash back a smash or you're going to put out a block and then start an up tilt change from the block if you're able to do stuff like that and you've practiced it then absolutely do that and the call out is you know i'm gonna jump so meet me in the air with something that could start a combo or kill me or knock me off stage right and it's not just jumping. If it's like, you know, I'm going to shield for too long. So you're going to jump out of your mind car at the last second and then catch me in that and then go for like a fair if I happen to pop out. Right. Or, you know, I'm going to roll. So you do a turnaround F smash because I'm rolling behind you or something. Or from spot dodging, you can go for like a down smash or a down tilt or you can charge something. 